there you go. Okay, so it's about 6.30 and we're gonna start. Um, welcome to My Vedic Roots, a webinar on traditional solutions for hair loss. My name is Ekta and I'm going to be the host today. Um, My Vedic Roots is a platform that connects Indians to their roots. We bring you closer to the wisdom and knowledge of our Vedas through pujas, but they're no ordinary pujas. They're brought to you from the holy places like Haridwar, Rameshwaram, Somnath, and so on and so forth. We bring you yoga from Rishikesh and Bangalore and Mysore, which is where it originated from. Vastu Shastra, the ancient science of designing your homes and cultural education like Indian languages, music, dance, and your grandma's cooking that you might be thinking, how can I recreate those lovely dishes that my grandma cooked for me before? Today, we are adding yet another offering. And this offering is close to our hearts because we all have had issues with our health and we all want to make sure that we lead a healthier lifestyle. So we are providing consultations from world-renowned nutritionists and dietitians that are inspired by Ayurveda. What is Ayurveda? Ayurveda is the ancient uh, Vedic system of medicine. It originated more than 3000 years ago and it's been practiced and perfect by professionals in India. Ayur actually means life and Veda means knowledge. So if you put them together, it's the knowledge of life. Hair loss is something that, as I said before, has is very personal to me. It's plagued me since I was 16 years old. Uh, I have tried lots of solutions and some succeeded, some not so, so not some failures, some massive, massive failures. But I noticed a difference when I was in Bangalore in a yoga and a Ayurvedic retreat. I noticed a huge difference in my hair quality and the reduction in the daily falling. And that's one of the reasons I reached out to um, one of the best Ayurvedic uh, practitioners, dietitians, nutritionists, and wanted to bring that knowledge to all of you today, including myself, to help us to stop this, you know, this issue that we all face. Um, this hair loss issue, we are not alone. I think there are about 80 million people in the USA who are suffering from this issue, men and women, more men than women actually. And in this session today, we are joined by Dr. Mansi. Dr. Mansi Pujara is a renowned nutritionist from India. She's helped thousands of people lead a much happier and a healthier life. Um, she is combining her knowledge of Ayurveda with the modern science. So she is also a nutritionist. She's a dietitian. She goes to main hospitals in Mumbai where she is helping patients get healthier. Um, and she's also a yoga expert. So I think with that kind of combination, we have so much to gain and so much to look forward to. So welcome Dr. Mansi, and we can't wait to hear from you. Thank you so much, Ekta. Same here, even I'm too excited. <laughs> Also, to begin with, I would like to thank, I hope I'm audible, right, Ekta? Yes, you are. Yes. So to begin with, I would like to thank Ekta and of course the team of My Vedic Roots for giving me the opportunity. Not only that, but selecting a very good topic, that is hair loss, because as you said, it's a concern for everyone. It's not just females, but it's males, adults, youngs, and even adolescents, you know, like so everybody is worried about their hair. So today I'm here to share my experience, whatever I've learned through my client, through my 20 years of experience and like to put it across in a simple manner so that, you know, it will be useful for all the audience. So to begin with, so our topic is Ayurvedic solutions for hair loss. So before to start, so let's understand in brief what is Ayurveda so that we can connect the hair physiology, what Ayurveda sees. I'll start sharing. Hope it's visible, right? Ikta, it's moving. Yes, Dr. Mansi, everything is yeah, great. Great. Yes. 
so what is ayurveda so as ekta already suggest uh, mentioned you know like so ayurveda it's a word which is made up of conjugation of two sanskrit word you know it's ayur and veda because all the texts of original texts of ayurveda are in the sanskrit language so ayur is nothing but age or life force or energy and veda is nothing but science or knowledge so literally ayurveda is the science or the knowledge which is talking about age or which is talking about life so if you see the sanskrit uh, definition of ayurveda it says it is hita hitam so
So we have that is a pitta dosha. So it is vata dosha, pitta dosha, and kapha dosha. Now Ayurveda says when there is a balance of these three doshas or five elements, that is health. And whenever there is an imbalance, that leads to disease. So, for example, like as our topic is hair loss or hair fall or hair health, we need to consider it like, for example, if water is increased in your body. So, just uh, imagine, you know, like outside environment, there is a lot of air, is outside, it's very windy outside. The same environment takes place inside our bodies. There's a lot of air inside. People also complain of gas, blotting. You know, they have pains here and there. So, when it, you relate this water with your hair, there's a lot of dryness in your body there is a lot of air getting friction with the organs you know so that will get into degeneration so you may have split ends or dry hair or thinning of hair so these are all the features of vata dosha which is being increased inside the body then we have pitta dosha so for example whenever there's a lot of pitta so there's a lot of heat inside the body so whenever there's a lot of heat the main form or the main function of heat is transformation. So it will start transformation on the higher scale. So the graining of hairs, you know, that will be on the higher side when the pitta dosha in the body has increased. The third is kapha. So kapha is, as we saw, it is made up of water and earth. So whenever the kapha dosha is increased inside the body, you can imagine there's a lot of water inside the body. So there's a lot of increasing of the, like when you compare it with hair, there's a lot of secretions happening. So there's a lot of secretions of the sebaceous glands and there's a lot of mucus being accumulated on the scalp, which gets converted into dry flakes, you know, which is nothing but earth, something solid structure, which is coming on the scalp, you know, so that is a form of earth element. So you get a lot of problems of dandruff and because of dandruff there is loss of nutrition or there is malnutrition of the hair and then you know there starts hair fall so you need to understand what is vata what is pitta dosha kapha dosha and you have to balance it so once you start balancing then you start uh, going towards the health so it's not just hair health but it's like consider overall health you know or the holistic health so this is one of the important principle and the other important principle which i would like to share is regarding sapta dhatus because today our topic is hair and we need to understand hair is also one of the tissues so ayurveda believes that our body is made up of seven tissues or sapta dhatu we call this dhatu and dhatu is nothing but tissue so first one is the rasa dhatu so just briefly i will shortly i will try to make you understand so whatever food we eat so first like whatever i am having my meals it will first get digested in my system it will first get digested yeah, yeah. It will first get digested in my systems and it will get accumulated in the liver. Now the liver will make the transformation and it will convert my food into amino acids or into the glucose, which my body can use it and start making my tissue. So the first tissue after having your meat, which is formed in the body as per Ayurveda, is rasadhatu, that is the plasma fluid. Once the plasma fluid is formed, it will start carrying the all the nutrients to different parts. And the second tissue which is made is raktadhatu. So Ayurveda believes that from first, you know, it will go to second. So the Rakta dhatu needs the nutrients or the nutrition from the rasadhatu. Once your blood is formed, the cells are formed, that will carry it to the mass dhatu. Mass dhatu is nothing but our muscular system. So the muscles, you know, so we need lots of muscles. So here, all the RBCs and WBCs, we have hemoglobin. And then hemoglobin, we also have myoglobin, which is needed for the formation of the muscles. So then the muscles need the nutrition from the Rakta dhatu. Then once the muscles are formed, then it leads to formation of a meid dhatu. It's nothing but the fats which are stored inside our body so the fats here you can see it is it needs a base of the muscles you know so from muscles the fats are what from fats we the formation takes place of the asti dhatu is nothing but our bone our skeleton our the entire structure which is the asti dhatu from asti dhatu the nutrition goes to nervous tissue or majja dhatu that is our brain the spinal cord the entire nervous system and from here it goes to shukra dhatu that is the reproductive fluid which has ovum and which has sperm so these seven dhatus are interrelated to each other so it's not that the rasa dhatu will directly go to shukra dhatu or directly form the sperm and ovum but it will go through this entire cycle first second third fourth fifth sixth seventh so whenever i want to improve my the quality of my sperm or ovum i need to start working from here and to work on all these seven tissues so it's not just that single tissue that directly i can work it similarly today we want to understand how hair tissue is connected so 
Ayurveda believes that hair is a part of the bone that is asti dhatu, you know, it is a upadhatu or a mal, it's a part, you know, so it needs a nutrition from the bone. So if I want to make my hair health good or I want to prevent hair fall, then I need to focus on my asti dhatu, that is my bone tissues, you know, like again, it's not just bone tissue. Now we know, we understand that there are seven tissues and it's not directly, you know, whatever I eat will directly form my asti dhatu or bones. It will start from directly the food to rasa, then to rakta, then to mausa, then to medha, then to asti, that is a bone tissue, and then it will make my hair. So once I need, I need this good health, I need to work on my first is the bone tissue. So as we always know, the skeleton is made up of full of minerals. The more the dense it is, more the minerals it has, the stronger. The stronger it is, the stronger are your hair. So we need good amount of minerals coming in like calcium, magnesium, then phosphorus, zinc through food, and that will make your bone very stronger now we know that it is not just calcium and all so we know that this is uh, asti or bone is provided nutrition through made dhatu that is your fats also so we need good fats inside our body so fats is we need a good percentage we not be so obese we don't with the underweight also now we also know that whenever there's obesity there is a lot of fats inside the body and we also know that once they are obese the bones are very weak you know you can connect you know like the people those are obese they have osteoporosis osteopenia or they have some bone related issues you know like because there's a lot of uh, fats on the higher side so the nutrition to the bone or the skeleton reduces so we have to have a good uh, percentage of fats inside our body and also we need good quality of fats coming in through our diet so it can be any form it can be in the form of seeds like we have chia seeds we have flax seeds even ayurveda seeds the sesame seeds are very good for your hair then it can come from the nuts like walnuts which has good oils or it is almonds also uh, it can come through good oils like olive oil or uh, ghee in India, you know, like we are uh, very fond of ghee. So even good ghee also in a proper proportion is a good fat, you know, like coming inside. Then now again, we know uh, we have fat soluble vitamins. So they are vitamin A, D, E and K. So those are all fat soluble. So sometimes, you know, people, they completely cut out the fats in their food because they want to lose their weight. But if that is done, then the fat soluble vitamins are not absorbed. The fat is not being uh, kept proportional and that will also affect the asti dhatu or the bone tissue and that will again affect your hair. So we need a good amount of fats so that fat soluble vitamins are absorbed. Also modern wise you can connect you know like for the health of your bones we need good amount of vitamin D. So vitamin D is nothing but a fat soluble vitamin unless and until it is on the higher side the calcium absorption will not be taking place. So we need to have a good fats. Then third, we have a muscles that is mass dhatu. So it's not just only fat. So first we have to work on bone tissue, then your fats, then then now we are working on the muscles. So muscles, everybody knows is nothing but protein. So we need good proteins coming inside from our food. So you may be following any food habits. It can be a veg, a vegetarian or non-vegetarian or vegan. So Ayurveda is open for everything because it's an ancient science. So it will everything. But you need to make sure that how much is your weight, how much is your physical activity, what are the sources which you are comfortable for the proteins and make sure that it is coming in from one or the other option. So we need good amount of proteins. Now again we know that it's not just proteins but this muscles is again dependent on the blood. So we know that we need good amount of hemoglobin. So we need a good amount of B12, vitamin C, iron, copper. So it's a combination. So we need good amount of those minerals and those vitamins which will increase your hemoglobin, which will increase your myoglobin and it will give nutrition to your muscles and that nutrition will be further passed it on. Now this rakta or hemoglobin is dependent on the first juice or the rasa of what you are eating, right? So the whatever I'm eating, my body will digest it and then it will get absorbed and assimilated and then the first juice will be formed in the so that is trust that. Now, rasadhatu is dependent on what are you eating. So the, you should have a complete whole meal. The difference between nutrition and one basic concept in Ayurveda is Ayurveda gives more focus on digestion. What happens sometimes, you know, we feel that I'm having all the nutrients, I'm eating it, everything, you know, what are the sources, but still my hair are not growing or maybe it can be any other issues in your health. So you need to work, how's your digestion, you know, so whether the, my body, whatever you're eating is completely digested, if it is not digested, then there is no absorption, there is no assimilation and there is no tissue formation. And this this digestion ill 
decided like the balance it is decided or it is dependent on the balance of vata pitta and kapha like if i have lots of blotting if i have lots of gash issues if i have lots of acidity so though i am eating a complete meal you know but this first step you know the rust formation is not taking place properly if the rust is not being formed properly we don't have good nutrients coming in so if we don't have it then further tissue formations will stop if the bone is not healthy then the hair will definitely not be to be healthy so i with the focus is more on digestion so that whatever you are eating is completely absorbed and those digestion is dependent on your vata pitta and kapha all the five elements inside your body you know so once they are balanced all this tissue will achieve their digestion and then you can achieve your good health not only for the hair but it's like a complete health you know it can be any issues inside your body so this is the hair physiology how ayurveda takes hair is and how to improve it we need to understand at each and every level you know like try to find out where i'm going wrong and work on it and then definitely we can have a good health so here i would like to end my presentation so uh, i just took few minutes so that you know i wanted people to connect with the base of ayurveda you know so though it's ayurveda it's an ancient science but the roots of the logic of the uh, science is so strong you know so when we start integrating it and we have in today's scenario with all the foods and all the nutrition you know we can achieve good health definitely yes ekta just give me a second i'm just yeah, sure sure ekta process all this information this is so amazing i'm i'm still looking at i'm making notes as we speak it's really really interesting for me right. uh, so i'm really excited that uh, i mean i'm i'm wondering why is it that even though i grew up in india that nobody ever talked to me about it you know that nobody ever ever mentioned all this information to me and i have missed out uh, on this knowledge for so long so yes right here i'm right here yes yes thank you dr mansi for that question i just wanted to check that uh, very very um, informative how much in ayurveda uh, it importance is laid on stress levels and hormones yes yes definitely ekta that's a very good question now as you understand the physiology as i told you know like so you are having a complete uh, nutrition meal with everything all but then you are stressed out right so once you are stressed out so it can be a simple thing you know just having a webinar can also create a stress you know so stress has uh, a wide range of uh, uh, definitions you know like so it's not a simple or in adolescents you know you can just take a example so i have many adolescents kids you know those who have hair fall during their exams so they a lot of stress you know like so though they are eating everything they are at home itself you know like so mothers are taking care in india you know like we do have you know the mothers you know like moving around the kids and they give everything still they have a complaint so stress you know it directly affects you know the uh, mode of digestion because for digestion you need uh, your good nervous system the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system the moment there is a stress the digestive system is haywire the food is not digested so though you are eating everything the first place you know the rasa dhatu you know the digestion doesn't take place and hence the nutrition doesn't go ahead and hence there is no other tissue formation and then it leads to hair fall so stress is directly related with hair fall or it can be any disease itself though we are discussing hair fall today but it's connected to everything it can be obesity or it can be under nutrition or diabetes all the things so thank you so much dr mansi again we have a question from sudarta jamor she uh, wants to know they want to know that uh, do you, what do i do for hair growth so now that people are coming to you we've understand the physiology how do i understand what my problem is you know and it's not one solution for everybody because i'm seeing in the chat function people are saying can i use onions can i use oil can i you know and i think it's very difficult to answer because now we've got the background it's not one solution for everyone Yes, yes, definitely. There is no one diet for everyone. There is no one solution, or there is no one medicine. And I, Rida, you know, like if you say if you come uh, for for me, like just for a simple cold, you know, like there will be a different medicine, you know, for you, and there will be a different medicine for my other client, you know, like because I need to take a proper history, you know, diagnosing where you are going wrong, where is the imbalance, whether it's water, whether it's pitta, or whether it's kapha, is very important to understand. And on that base, you know, like everything changes, whether you know it can be a local application or it can be whatever you are popping in inside or what food you are having and you know the entire thing changes so we need to definitely diagnose you know like so where and which step you know you are going wrong you know and we 
need to integrate it with diet, with Ayurvedic medications, and also we can have a uh, like I do. I have done Ayurveda, and once I started my Ayurveda, you know, like I started thinking that this is an ancient science, right? But we need to integrate it with modern technology, the current scenario, what is happening these days, you know, like. So I started studying further. I did my nutrition. I did clinical nutrition. Then I did sports nutrition. Also, I'm pursuing masters in my sports nutrition, so that you know I can club or integrate both the things. You know, like so for diagnosing, you know, I take a history regarding the entire the uh, taking eye with eye. mine again i also ask them to go for the parameters you know like to complete blood check you know like so i need i need a deeper uh, uh, inputs you know like so where the levels are and then you know like you can combine and you can give them a proper diet or you can give them a proper advice about you know how they can increase their health or how they can prevent their health fall um sheba is asking us that uh what do you, what do we do for hormonal thyroid related hair loss and i know that because everybody tests uh, tsh levels you know as the first thing when you want to find out you check your uh, hemoglobin you check your you know iron levels and and you check your your uh, hormone thyroid uh, levels as well what do you have to say to that dr mansi yes yes definitely see thyroid levels you know as i said you know like we need a good pith levels inside our body pith is directly related to digestion so what happens in thyroid you know so there are two thyroids it can be hypo or it can be hyper so the more the females are uh, concerned about hypothyroidism so the metabolism goes very slow so whatever you are eating you know the digestion itself goes very slow also not even digestion once the digestion has happened you know so we saw you know that there is a step by step tissue formation all those tissue formation you need good fire you need good metabolism to transform them you know so that is also very lower sign so whenever it's a case of thyroid you know like so again nutrition definitely plays a very important role but we need to improve that fire the digestive fire so after taking a history i always see whether it's cup or it is pitta you know so i have advised them having some good uh, we have good herbs you know which are easily available at home you know so they are very helpful in increasing your metabolism like for example if it has a lot of cup inside the body we can ask them to have a cinnamon water or you can just ask them to have a pepper you know whenever they are having their meals they can add pepper inside so whatever food stuff they are eating you know they will be properly digested so that the nutrients get properly absorbed you know and then gradually they can find improvement in their hair so that improving digestive fire is very is very important in the cases wherever there is hormonal imbalance particularly regarding thyroid I, I think the problem that I have had, and I've used uh, nutritionists' advice and dietitians' advice. Obviously, not as experienced as you are, Dr. Mansi, but I have had done that. But sometimes the problem is that people living in the USA, we feel that our reality is so different than of you know people living in India, where you have a lot of help. We are here on the go. We are working parents. You know, we don't have all that time. So, how do you, when you consult somebody in the U.S., are you taking into account our realities here and being able to give us solutions which are fast and easy, rather than you know something that I need two hours for cooking every day, one meal? No, no, I, I do understand. So I do have global clients, and I've been working on it since years. So I, I always, you know, like so before advising any plan, you know, like diet plan, you know, so understanding the client's lifestyle, you know, current scenario, current pacing, or current eating pattern, you know, is very important. Because I, if he doesn't have time, or he's having four meals, I can ask them to have eight meals. You know, like he's working, he's in meetings. It's very difficult. But what I suggest is, you know, I make him aware that where he's going wrong, what nutrients are missing, so you can have some. the thing so whatever breakfast he may be having as i said you know just adding a pepper powder is going to improve the absorption you know like or sometimes you know the if the good fats are missing so whatever he is having he is having his meal you know he can just add little bit of sesame seeds or he can have flax seeds added to his diet you know so once he is aware so whatever he is having you know like but he can have different options which can be added immediately in the diet you know but it happens only once there is awareness you know once you know the sources okay you know like this is very easy to add on you know and that's going to really help him to increase his uh, diet so of course you know the keeping the uh, client's pattern and be flexible about it is very important before advising any plan <laughs> thank you so much so we have uh, mahmood hussain zubairi has raised a hand i think he wants to ask a question i'm asking you to unmute uh, mahmood if you wish to ask the question in person please go ahead and do so uh but uh, otherwise you can type it in the question and answer section so that we can make sure that we respond to your questions i also have other questions i want to go back to because there's so many questions coming in i just want to make sure that i don't miss 
anybody's, uh, you know, questions in, in this way. Uh, how do you know, Surekha Shah wants to know, how do you know you're having which kind of dosha or constitution? You explain that. And I think that's one of the things that uh, we are talking about. If you can have a consultation, uh, you can, you will have one hour consultation with Dr. Mansi and she can go through your history and she can tell you uh, what she thinks her analysis is of your constitution. But Dr. Mansi, if you'd like to add to that, please do let us know. Yes, definitely. Uh, we need a very detailed history, you know, like, so then only we can come to know where exactly there is an imbalance. So we have to take that this consultation so that I know your personal history, your current diet pattern. And on that base, the signs and symptoms, I can advise, you know, like which dosha is imbalance and where we need to work on. Absolutely. Uh, Norma is also here. She's asking, what if the hair fall is due to COVID? Does COVID make your hair fall? Yeah, definitely. I've seen so many clients, you know, like after COVID, you know, either they have hair fall or they have weight loss or they have low immunity, low strength, you know. So I either believe in a Rasayan Chikitsa or rejuvenation therapy, you know, like, so where, you know, the focus is on growing hair or not hair, but it can be like in general COVID, you know, like it's growing cells. So it's rejuvenation, you know, it increases multiplication and it increases the anabolism. So we generally after COVID, you know, whenever the client comes, you know, like, so along with the doshas, we also give them a Rasayan medications or uh, Rasayan even is possible at home, you know, like, so there are some ingredients, you know, as per the signs and symptoms, I advise them to have it at home. It's a simple, even ghee also acts as a Rasayan. So once we ask them to have ghee with their milk, you know, like, so that also acts as a Rasayan. That gives good strength, you know. So once the cells are generating on their normal scale, you know, the hair will start coming back. Uh, thank you so much. And another question is from Sudarta is saying, do we need to get blood work done? I think um, from my understanding is that it will only depend on your personal history. I think starting point should be your consultation. Once you give, it's one hour consultation with Dr. Mansi, and she will then be able to give you an analysis of what she thinks needs to be done. In some situations, but blood work might not need to be done. In certain situations, blood work might need to be done. So yes uh, and no is the answer depending on your uh, personal situation. Uh, Dr. Mansi, do you want to add anything to that particular? Yes, question? because you know history makes us very important. You know, like so, where you are, so whether it's an hormonal issues is facing, or it's just a nutritional deficiencies, or maybe it's just about the with the cup imbalance. So after evaluation, you know, I can advise them whether we need a blood report or not. But definitely, if it's needed, yeah, it's going to be needed, and it will be helpful for you to improve your quality of hair. I just want to uh, check with you in terms of how long will it take for me to see the benefits on my hair. So once I, I've taken the personal consultation from you, Dr. Mansi, I've incorporated all your helpful suggestions and your diet plans into my lifestyle. When can I see a difference? Yeah, so hair cycle, you know, it, again, as I said, you know, it varies, you know, like, because I don't know where the cause is. So whether you have hormonal levels or if you see the five levels, you know, so whether it's a hormonal level or it's a bone tissue level or it's a rasadhat level, where exactly it is. So once you start making changes, it will depend on okay, how deep the problem is. But definitely, you know, like, uh, maybe after three or four weeks, you know, like, you can start... Uh, feeling better or you can start feeling, observing the changes, you know, but the full recovery will again depend on it. Sometimes it takes maybe six weeks or 12 weeks to 24 weeks, you know, because hair growth is not like if I start eating today, it's not direct, it's going to hair. It has to pass on to all the tissues, you know, so first the tissues, rust will become, then your blood will improve, then your muscles, protein will improve, then your fats will improve, then the bone will improve, which will provide nutrition to the hair. So it's not one day like I start eating poor and because it's not popping pills, right? It's not nutrition or I'm just taking a nutrient and directly it's going there. I'm trying to improve the physiology so that, you know, later on also it is very helpful for you to maintain that hair. Otherwise, sometimes it happens, you know, temporary we eat everything and then, you know, it's settled and then once we stop, you know, it again goes by. So it's like changing or working on your uh, um, what we say is prakruti in Ayurveda or basic your structure, you know, where, where you are going wrong. So once you start getting corrections, you know, gradually, definitely it will make a lot of difference. 
I'm also getting more questions, but I'm going to just ask one thing before we leave. I think a lot of people want to know, yes, it's very complicated science and, you know, it's something very different for, from us. We cannot understand it in one, one webinar. Uh, mm -hmm. We clearly need the help of experts like you to guide us through this process. But what are the some tips that no matter what our constitution is, whatever our dosha is, that can help us? So tell us some quick fixes that we can do, I can do tonight, and I should be able to see some amount of difference in my hair. Yes, yes, definitely. So as you said, we discussed earlier, so there is no one pill for everyone. But uh, definitely Ayurveda has a concept, as I said, you know, of rejuvenation, you know, like, so something, you know, which will help you uh, have the effect of anti-aging. So in scenario, this scenario, or anywhere, like, see, if you're Indians or anywhere, if you want to have an anti-aging effect, you know, it always, it's connected with oiling or moisturizing. You know, like, whenever you want to preserve something in your home, you know, if you generally cover it with oil, or if you see your cars and all, you know, we constantly in between we keep oiling your cars you know like or something there is any machine at our home you know if you want to prevent or if you want to increase the life of the machine you know what we do is we do oiling you know so similarly ayurveda has a concept of nasya therapy you know like so it is providing moisturizing or uh, providing oiling to body you know at the inner level and mind is the main thing you know which handles everything you know so nasya therapy is nothing but to have put uh, maybe a coconut oil or it can take a ghee you can just warm it up and at bedtime you know you can just put one or two drops inside your nostrils because Ayurveda believes that this nostril is a way to brain you know whatever is put inside you know it reaches your brain so you can put at a bedtime you can have one or two drops of coconut oil or it can be ghee you can just put it inside your nostrils and it will start moisturizing inside you know at all the cellular levels and all the diseases above the clavicle you know all the diseases the sheet of predations hair is you know located over here will have benefits so it's not just just your hair but you will have good eye so you have good smell you will have good hearing power you know which actually degenerates as you age so everything will be benefited with the help of nasya therapy which can be done by everyone only one thing is maybe sometimes some people have a sinus issue or something they can do it or they can prefer it putting it in the daytime you know like whenever there is less congestion but those who doesn't have any issues yeah they can definitely put it at night time and they can continue with it and they will start, start seeing or some changes you know again as i said it takes time maybe after two three weeks Definitely. And Dr. Mansi, we are so uh, flattered and so privileged. We have actually Dr. Suresh Kumar Mishra with us today joining us. And he's saying, please let us know how to cure alopecia areata. I know this in adults, there is, you know, curing is something that we cannot do. We can only help with, uh, you know, tips and solutions that can help the situation. But uh, cure is, is a long way away. But I'm, I'm sure Dr. Mansi, you have, you have some doctor to doctor conversation that we need to happen now yeah yeah hi dr suresh yeah so i'm liking the yeah i would like to know your age so i think dr kumar mishra you should stay suresh kumar mishra you should stay back after the webinar so you can have this she would like yeah, to know yeah, because that will help she would you like know. to know Yes, she would like to know a lot of information so she can guide you accordingly. But yes, she will be very happy to help you. And I'm sure, Dr. Mansi, you have doctors coming to you all the time. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I have from all the sciences, you know. <laughs> because everybody is curious about Ayurveda. And because it's an ancient science, everybody wants to know, you know, like what are we missing in today's scenario? Where are we going wrong? You know, so we have so much of technology, but we don't have something quick fix for a hair. Or there are many other chronic disorders, you know, where you don't have solutions. So they come back to me and they try to find out, you know, what is there in Ayurveda, you know, let's take a help of it. Thank you so much for that, uh, Dr. Mansi. I know we're very short of time and the messages keep coming up. People are asking us, can we get a consultation with you? Uh, are you going to recommend Ayurvedic medicine too? And I think this is a very important question. Uh, is that something that you recommend? Uh, because there are uh, in the USA, some places it's not uh, still recognized and legal. So in that situation, what do you recommend? Yeah, I have actually, I've been practicing since years and I do have clients globally. So now I've seen, you know, like Ayurveda has almost reached everywhere, you know, like, so it's people and uh, because of online, you know, so though maybe it is difficult in their particular area, you know, but the people find out solutions and they get it online or they get it shipped, you know, like, and they use it, you know, so it is, I think it's easily available, of course, but it's not that the first time you come and I just advise, but yes, of course, whenever I need, like you have some scalp issues where I need something locally to be needed because everybody doesn't have scalp issues. 
issues, right? But yes, of course, whenever it's needed, I do advise them to take that. So that's going to definitely help them to balance their doshas and to achieve the maximum, you know, like what are they looking for? Honestly, uh, you already know we have a queue here. So I'm going to be, uh, you know, getting a consultation soon. And I know my colleague Suma would be next in line. And now we also have Sudetta, uh, she uh, would like as well uh, in Cal from California. So you see now the, the queue is, is becoming longer and longer. So if you are interested in a consultation, it's only $51 for one hour of Dr. Mansi's time. She is not only an Ayurvedic uh, you know, food consultant, she's also a nutrition consultant, she's a clinical uh, dietitian, and she's also a yoga practitioner. So with all that knowledge and experience, we, um, we are so eager to, to start this process. How quickly can I make this appointment? Uh, you know, can I make it tomorrow? Can I make it day after tomorrow? How long do I have to wait, Dr. Mansi? Uh, definitely we'll coordinate soon, you know, like we'll coordinate with data and we can plan out the appointment. Definitely. Absolutely. <laughs> so reach out to our team. Uh, we will make sure we will put you on the fast track and we will get you an appointment. I know that uh, Dr. Mansi's schedule is very, very busy, but we have asked her for this week, uh, specifically going into the weekend and next week, we've asked her for some time. So please do let us know if you want to avail for this consultation for next week specifically, and we can make those appointments available. Uh, Norma, it's the same question you've asked, so we will get that appointment. Uh, all you need to do is just connect with us. You can call us on our uh, US phone number, which is 650-300-9208. Uh, or you can connect with us through our website, which is myvedicroots.com. Uh, you can also reach our Facebook page. It's My Vedic Roots Facebook page. We are also taking bookings there. So thank you everyone so much for your time. We've already gone over time. Dr. Mansi, it's so, so happy today. And I'm so happy that, you know, we, everybody benefited from this session. Same year, Ekta, same year. I, and I'm really happy to share my knowledge and I hope so, you know, the clients or the audience have definitely find it useful and make some connection with Ayurveda, you know, like, so that's really going to help them further. Thank you so much, Dr. Mansi. Any, any, any more tips, onion juice, anything I can do, amla juice? <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> as we already discussed, you know, like there are n number of things, you know, you Google out, you know, there is so much, you know, like, but definitely, you know, without consulting, don't do it because as you know, you know, sometimes, you know, it leads to imbalance, you know, it makes situation worse, you know, like, so it's better to avoid and have a consult and then you use it. <laughs> Okay, with that, we're going to end the webinar. Thank you, everybody, from jo for joining us. It's late in the evening from New York, New Jersey, uh, coming from Dallas, Texas, and coming from California. I'm so happy. You're very close to me. I am in California, so I'm really happy that you joined us. Uh, please do stay connected. We bring amazing amount of in really quality information that can help your life and, uh, and help ourselves in the process. So we only bring things that connect with us. And we hope that it has helped you today. If you need any more information, just contact me directly. My name is Ekta and I live in the Bay Area and I am available on info at myvedicroots.com.